Day two of a very busy agenda for the future host commission of the International Olympic Committee. Yeah, they are scouting out our venues, talking to Utahns about our readiness to host the Winter Games again in 2034. Deanie Wimmer, join us live from Soldier Hollow. Deanie anchoring our coverage out there. We got the sense day one, Deanie went really, really well. How about day two? Oh, hey, on a day where you've got a bluebird sky, your temperatures are plus 60 and you're in the mountains, how can the field trip not go well? I learned that some of the delegations spent time on the slopes at Deer Valley. They visited Park City, the venues there, and also here at Soldier Hollow, the biathlon track. And all day we've been seeing smiles and hearing good reviews. Before their trip here to Summit and Wasatch counties, the Future Host Commission got their day started at a community forum at the Eccles Theater in downtown Salt Lake City. Christoph, Christoph Dubai, Duby, excuse me, Olympic Games Executive Director, spent some time reminiscing about the impact of the 2002 Games and what set Salt Lake City apart then. As we're being considered for the 2034 Games, he told us repeatedly that it's one thing to build venues. What he is seeing that impresses is our Olympic culture our people and our enthusiasm here what was different were the concerts afterwards so not only you bring sport but the culture in that in that uh, particular case music Press the camera go straight up now he also pointed out that the city was dressed up for the games, not just the venues. And of course, we've seen after event after event that Utahns know how to throw a party. It's not just for the, the athletes and the executives, but we know how to include the whole community. Doobie also commented and offered praise that our team was budget conscious. They liked the fact that we only spent the money that we had budgeted. Of course, the organizers continue to do that for our 2034 bid. And it's easier to do that when most of the venues and much of the infrastructure is already built and operating. So those were all good signs. Now all throughout we've found this team has let us follow them to the various venues. They've been accessible. They've been friendly. Alex Cabrero has spent the day with the delegation. What have yeah. you been seeing and hearing? Uh, you know, Dini, they absolutely love it here. They said, you know, I've, I've covered them before in some of their visits and sometimes it can be a little standoffish, not to say what they were mean or anything, but mm -hmm. it's all business. This was completely different because they were happy to be here. They had a great positive attitude about being here now some of the members of the IOC's future host commission they have been to Utah to Salt Lake City before but some of them haven't and they told me they were very excited to visit Utah and visit Salt Lake City because they've heard all about our Olympic legacy now the first venue that they visited this morning, checking it out, was over at Utah Olympic Park in Park City. That is the headquarters of our Utah Olympic Legacy Foundation, but it's also where the bobsled, luge, and skeleton venue, where that, where that venue is located. Now, those events were held in 2002 there. It's also in the plan for 2034 in that bid as well. Now, the IOC was impressed with what they saw today, but you got to understand, it's not just what they saw, but it's also what they felt. What is most impressive is how vivid the legacy is. And it's both the venues that are existing, but they've been improved over time. So they're better than in 2002. And second, it's the spirit around the city. That Olympic spirit is one a lot of people in Utah still feel from 2002, and they want to feel it again. The IOC also visited Park City Mountain Resort, where a couple of events will be held for that 2034 bid. It's also where the National Ability Center is located. Now, it is important to remember that while the Olympics is a big deal, so are the Paralympics, and our 2034 bid includes those games as well. Now, coming up in our 6 o'clock newscast, we will show you what they were doing when they visited Soldier Hollow Nordic Center up this way. In the, in the Midway area up here. Uh, and one of the IOC members, Dini, you mentioned uh, they were having a good time. We were talking about that. She wanted to try shooting. She shoots clay pigeons, but she wanted to shoot some of the targets right back there at the shooting range as part of the biathlon venue. So she got down, she got some coaching, she hit some of the targets, which brought a big applause. And, and you know, Dini, it's those little moments, things like that, that really leave such a great lasting impression to the IOC. Right, and I totally agree with you, your impression too, that they have been much more lighthearted and less yeah. efficient
social on this visit, more eager to interact with people and to just take in all the sights, which I think bodes well for our community. Right, and not just uh, lighthearted with the people, but also lighthearted with the media. They were yes. laughing. They, they even put up with a couple of my jokes. And uh, <laughs> they were having a great time. And I, and I think I, they love Utah. There's no doubt about it. All right. Well, this is, again, exciting because it's one of the final hurdles that we have before they formally announce whether Salt Lake City gets the 2034 bid. So we'll send it back to you. This is the encouraging thing, and we'll have more coming up tonight on KSL 5 News at 6. Wow, looks like a great visit. Dini, Alex, thank you. Don't forget, KSL is your home for all things Olympics. You can watch our in-depth coverage of the state's efforts to get the Winter Games back in Utah right now on KSLTV.com. And in just over three months, the 2024 Paris Summer Olympic Games, our team is preparing right now to bring you exclusive stories from this year's Games, reporting live from France closer to the July 26th opening ceremony.